Speaking of Pikachu, uh, do you think there's ever going to be a generation where they don't make like a Pikachu clone? Nope. Nope. Because there's one every single game, starting with Pichu, which at least that one was an actual Pikachu evolution, but... Then we got the uh, Minun and Plusle. Uh, there's always going to be a Pikachu clone. Yeah. I mean, I guess they are cute, but sometimes I think that maybe, maybe they kind of overdo it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, Should I keep trying to catch a Pikachu? I want that Pikachu. Okay, I'll just uh, skip over the battles then. Because I don't want to get... Hey! Pikachu! But it is so chubby and it's so cute. Look and... how fat he is! And his belly's a different color! <laughs> You're so fat, Pikachu. Okay. That's not very effective. Well, I'm like, at level, level 10. 10. Throw so, Pokeballs at it. Throw 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 Pokeballs at it. Wendy, I'm going to throw my balls at it. Do not worry. Pikachu. The thing I love most about Pikachu, especially later on, is the fact that if it ha it has like a little gender difference. Yeah, Pikachu, let's cut. Yeah, Pikachu. Oh, that's so cute. Tail. Yeah, the difference in the tail, is especially the little heart shape for females and stuff. But it's so cute. When several of these Pokemon gather, their electricity could build and cause lightning storms. Yeah! It's also super chubby and cute. Super chubby and fat. So, we need a name for this Pikachu. Pika! Seriously? Yes! I'm naming it after Red's Pikachu. Ah, so you're naming it after them. Okay. Okay, that is fair. I usually call it something like Choo Choo Rocket or something like that. <laughs> Choo Choo Rocket? You don't remember that game? No. That was a game. And I thought it had the funniest name. And I was like, that's the perfect name for a Pikachu. What is Choo Choo Rocket? Um, it was like a little minor game. It was... Oh, God, it's been so long. Now I can't stop running into Pikachus. I hope you're happy. They're all jealous. They all want to be the Pikachu that I'm you love. I'm going to have to kill it. No. Oh, wait. Before I left, I was going to talk about the metagame, wasn't I? Yeah. I guess I could actually go on and fight more of the gym, um, the little people, the trainers. Yes. I was going to train the Pikachu like normal, but then I was like, wait, why am I doing that? Um. Oh, jeez, my knee. You okay? Yeah, I just banged my knee on the desk I was trying to fix I was sitting. Whoops. Anywho, metagame. Um, I won't go too in-depth about it, because I guess we could do a separate video on it at, like, Pokemon Showdown or something. But, okay. essentially, uh, a metagame refers to a game that's within a game, and Pokemon has one of those. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the way it works is, now, every Pokemon's got a set of base stats, um, that can be, that, that are usually calculated soon after they're released, or, you know, whatever. Uh, I think it's put up it on Pokemon, there, there's like a website for it now, run by Pokemon, that releases their base stats, and their abilities, their hidden abilities, and that sort of thing. So the idea of that is, you're gonna take a Pokemon, you're gonna give it the, you're gonna give it a certain move pool, and based on that move pool, and it's, like, like the, based on its base stats, you're gonna give it a specific move pool, and then just to support that, you're going to give it a specific EV spread. Um, so you're going to invest more points into certain stats than others. That's that's what an EV spread is, investing certain points into certain stats. Um, you only get a limited amount of EVs, though. So the idea of the metagame is you're going to put as much as you can into the stats it'll utilize and not the stats it won't utilize. So, for example, um, Charizard has really high special attack. Right? So moves like Flamethrower are special type moves, so they utilize the special attack stat instead of the attack stat. Um, so what you do then is you invest EVs into special attack, because that's what it's going to use, and you're not going to bother investing EVs into attack because it doesn't use attack. Does that make sense? Yep. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Um, so that's just the general idea of it. Um, you knew about this little secret, didn't you? No. 
It's in the middle of nowhere. Why would I know about it? You need to actually start looking around and stuff. Because you missed a ton of secrets. <laughs> They're just potions. Who cares? Uh, excuse me. They're free potions. <laughs> I never use potions anyways. Well, I don't n normally either, but still, they're free. I guess, yeah. But anywho, so uh, th that's the general idea. You know, you invest points in specific stats, and they, and then in turn, those Pokemon fill specific roles on your team that you put together, and then you face against other people with other Pokemon on their teams, right? And right. you can have gimmicks. Like, you can, you can change the weather, so you make them a rain team. They utilize, a, you know, the move Rain Dance... And the damp rock, because the damp rock makes rain last longer. And, or you can have, a, you know, a gimmick on um, defense or stalling. So, you know, moves like substitute, toxic, rest, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and everybody has a different style. And certain Pokemon are better at doing some things than others. So, for example, uh, Slowbro um, was a hidden gem I found when, doing, uh, when, when I was starting to learn the metagame. Um, Slowbro's got a lot of hit points. And it's got a lot of special defense and defense. So I invest EVs into that, and it just soaks up a bunch of hits. I give it the move Toxic, so it's always at a very high HP while the enemy is slowly losing HP over time due to poisoning. Um, or burn, because I gave it Scald as well. Uh, so, so it fulfills a specific role of, you know, sponging up hits and trying to whittle down you know, Pokemon, other Pokemon on my team can't handle. Um, but this all exists because there's a specialization of stats. So, Chris, if you'd be so kind as to show us the stats page on the Pokemon. Oh, sure. Give me just a few seconds. Pokemon learn new techniques as they grow, but sometimes moves need to be taught by the trainer. So, right. So, if we look at our Pokemon screen right now, we're going to look at lovely Pikachu. Stat screen. So, we've got attack, defense, speed, and special. So what this means is special defense and special attack are combined into one stat. Later on, this gets switched. L later on, they get divided. Um, but yeah, and um, going in, if you push A, you can see the moves, I believe. Yeah, so you'll see moves and then how, however much uh, more experience they need to get to level 5. As well as their total amount of experience and their name. Yes, yes. Um so here's the thing, right? Uh, in newer generations, you, you can you can continue playing if you like. Okay, this. I didn't know if you needed that or not anymore. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, so in newer generations, Pokemon have abilities and they have natures. So what natures do is they add a boost to a specific stat. So for example, the brave nature increases the points that the Pokemon will earn in the attack stat as it levels up but it'll decrease the amount of speed points it gets as it levels up. So, for example, I'm training a Mudkip, and we fight whatever Pokemon. We're just, you know, leveling up however. And because it's got a brave nature, for, um, let's say, let's say every stat gets two points. Well, now my attack stat gets three points because I've got the brave nature and a boost attack, but my speed stat gets one point because it lowers speed. Um, but that, that's just, like, a general thing. Um, so without that, you know, people are, don't really know <laughs> how to best utilize the Pokemon they have. Um, like, EV training wasn't even really a thing that people were aware of when this game came out. Because what EV training is, is essentially every Pokemon gives a certain yield. So for example, Pikachu, if you knock out a Pikachu, um, that's one point towards another point in speed. So... Every four points in an EV is one point in speed. Or, or one point in whatever. So Pikachu, you need to knock out four Pikachu to get one additional point in speed. Um, <laughs> Jigglypuff. Yeah, I love this little girl, this little thing. But thankfully it doesn't have a marker to paint your face with. Yeah, but funnily enough, in Pokemon Yellow, if you talk to it, Pikachu will fall asleep. Yes, that is actually really adorable, too. Yep. Um, jeez, I'm going on and on about this fucking metagame, aren't I? Yeah. Uh, uh, speaking, of, speaking of differences in this game, you'll notice that a lot of these Pokemon have weird, like, 
visuals on this screen. Instead of looking like an actual bubble sword, it looks like a flower and stuff. That's because the Pokemon show off as their egg types. Yes, so Pikachu looks like a fairy. Um, little Perk here looks like a monster. Gomper uh, looks like a cow, so that would relate to field. Mm -hmm. uh, Flytrap is a flower, so that's like the grass type. And then Scarecrow is a bird, which is the flying type. Um, egg groups or whatever. Right. Um, but ironically enough, egg groups don't exist in this generation. Yep. They were created for uh, Generation 2. I think they were planning on putting them in Generation 1. They just couldn't do it. Yeah, I think it was technical limitations, like mm -hmm. breeding and genders and that sort of thing. And a lot of it got changed after they uh, created Silver and Gold. Oh, which... Silver and Gold is the best game ever. I don't agree so. Why? I never really got into Gold and Silver like I did with the other games. Why? It's not, it's not that I don't like it or anything. It's just that it is too long of a game. So it Thing to say let me let me let me explain. You don't need to explain anything, Chris. I'm right. You're wrong. The end. Yeah, I'm going to explain <laughs> anyway. So uh, basically, my problem with it is the first eight gym leaders and fighting the elite four is no problem, but after that, it just seems really boring. Really? Why? I, it, there's you're expected to actually go. This is the game, it's the only game that does this where there's actually two different regions to go to. Kanto and Johto. Johto is the new region. You start sure. off in Johto, and yeah. you do the things as normal. You get the eight badges, you beat the Elite Four, and then you can go on and face the eight original gym leaders. So, Brock and Misty and all these people, and come to this area. The problem <laughs> is, there isn't much of a storyline for these they last do. eight. It's they just... Do. They're just there. It's just kind of boring. There's no, there's nothing really grabbing me, making me want to keep going forward. It's, it's supposed to be based on the fact that, like, you obviously liked the first game enough to buy the second game, and you get to see how the second, like, the first region has changed over the years. And uh, I also want to remind you, people didn't know Kanto was called Kanto back in Red and Blue. True. Like, people just referred to it as Indigo. Because uh, that uh, was like Indigo Plateau, yeah. Yeah, because that that's all we all we knew about it, like as a region name. Yeah. And then when you went to Johto, people were like, "Oh shit, it's Johto!" And then you left Johto to go to Kanto, and then you're like, "Oh shit!" So this thing's called Kanto. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Anywho, I, I um, still think they could have just added like a little bit more storyline. Like, I mean, by that time, Team Rocket's defeated. There's no like. A serious ongoing plot. There's no worry about legendaries, which now you can't stop dealing with legendaries anymore. But I digress. Because they're always popping up in places? Yep. Those are so cool. Um, anyways, I think that wraps it up for today. We, we've played a lot of Pokemon. We've actually played... It, I, I know it doesn't feel like a lot because you're just grinding most of the time. Yeah, but well, I mean, I'm also episode. going to check up on all these areas, too. There's, like, a couple of areas I haven't visited yet and talked to everybody, but, uh... Well, why don't we save the museum for the next episode? Okay. We'll do that, and we'll challenge Brock as well, because I think all we're right. pretty much up there. Yeah, well, I could actually train Bulbasaur a little bit, because I don't have any, like... Eh, we can do that off-screen. Yeah, it's we can. Ju it's, just, it's just level grinding. Yeah, it is. You know, we're, we're pretty much up there. We're all around level 10. You know, maybe another two or three levels, we should be fine. Yeah. I'd feel better if uh, Bulbasaur had Bond Whip, though. And that's what but I'll he... probably grind for. Grind. Yeah. Grind. Grind for. So, okay. That'll be fine. That This will be it for this uh, little recording session. So, thank you all for watching. Feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this series. And feel free to leave any comments about anything that you've seen in the video or anything you want to say. If you want to call Windu a Weeboo, that's fine, too. No, it's not... Uh, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine to me. So, um, anyway, guys, next up, we'll be going to the museum. We'll be facing our first gym and doing a little bit more exploring and stuff. So, I'll see you then. Say goodbye, Wendy. Don't tell me what to do. Okay, then. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>